I can remember um, telling a friend of mine, I think I was probably about 12, um, and I can remember saying to him really clearly, yeah, my life, I'm really, I'm going to make something of my life. You know, I really, you know, I, you know, I know that there's something about this life that's, that's, you know, there's some meaning here. I'm really going to make something out of my life. And um, I didn't know what it was, and I didn't know much about it, but I just felt this, this potential that I had. You know, I, I just knew it. And then uh, the years went by, and um, lots of things happened as they do, and I grew up and went through school and started working and getting involved with all of the things that everyone else was getting involved in. And this idea that I seemed to have when I was 12, that you know, my life was really worthwhile <laughs> and that I had something to, you know, really important and valuable to contribute, I, I always remember that conversation with my friends for some reason and yet as I grew up it was sort of seemed to become this this like childish idea somehow because it's well, well what's my life about really you know I don't see anything that I can really make a difference with I you know everything I do seems to be pretty meaningless you know even the things that I campaign for and stand up for doesn't really seem to make much difference so I got quite disillusioned, you know, just with everything, not, a, not in a massively depressed way, but just in a way of kind of giving up, you know, that, that thought and that dream of thinking that I had something valuable to contribute and my life really was going to make a difference somehow. And, um, and so I immersed myself in all of the things that other people seemed to be doing and, you know, my focus became myself and, um, trying to make myself happy and trying to work out what that was, you know, how could I be happy and so I looked around at other people and the media and my friends and, you know, learned what the things were that were supposed to make me happy, so having a you know, romantic relationship, having lots of money, having um, status and respect from my friends and having good physical health and slowly accumulating more and more ideas about what it was that was going to make me happy and working really hard to bring about this set of circumstances that was going to make me happy and um, sometimes I was successful and sometimes I wasn't but no matter what the situation was it, it always felt that there was just something missing it, it felt like there was something just, just out of reach, just in the future, and if I could only arrive there, then I would be really happy. And um, so I worked really hard at this, you know, finding the right partner, having enough money, sorting out my financial situation so that that was under control, and trying to look after my physical health. But there was just this underlying sense that there must be something more, there, there must be something more. And so I began looking for what this something more was, and um, speaking to different people about it, reading lots of books, watching different programs and films that talked about it or hinted at, that there was something more. But nobody could really tell me what, what this was. And. Um, it was through a friend that I was introduced to the Balanced View training and um, they were listening to talks and because I was spending time with them I ended up listening to talks and there was something that I heard when I was listening to these talks that most of what I heard was just gibberish, it was just almost like noise, I couldn't pin it down somehow, I couldn't fit it into any of my categories and my conventional descriptions but there were certain things I heard that just spoke to me. It was like um, it was like hearing a, a bell, just this incredibly clear tone, where what was spoken just made perfect sense. And I, I, I suddenly it was sort of it was like wake me up out of my slumber of all of these thoughts and emotions of just hearing something that rang completely true. And um, and I, I tried to listen really hard, and then it was back to all of the the, the sort of seemingly 
incomprehensible words I was hearing, and then the bell would ring again. There would be something that would would strike me, you know, something like um, all thoughts, emotions, and sensations are like a rainbow appearing in the sky. And it was like, yes, that's it, that's it. That that's finally I'm hearing something that directly relates to my experience. And it was so exciting and so refreshing that I just found myself <laughs> wanting to hear more about this. And so I began to listen to more talks and slowly it became clear to me how I'd been living my life and um, the basic misunderstanding or misperception that had meant that I'd become completely immersed in all of these descriptions about what was going on and basing my idea about how I needed to be in the world on all of this learned knowledge, on all of this information that I'd gathered from other people. And it was this basic misperception of giving all of the data, all of the thoughts, emotions, sensations and anything we can describe or perceive, we can just call data, giving this data a nature that was separate and independent from the intelligence by which it was known. So focusing only on the descriptions and ignoring the intelligence by which all of it was experienced. This intelligence that was wide open, naturally present and, and perceiving everything in a completely relaxed, effortless, laser-like way. And so what I was introduced to was a really simple way that I could identify this intelligence for myself. And initially that was just to stop thinking for a moment, re relax right here and right now and, and recognize this intelligence as, as being naturally present. And then for short moments, repeat that recognition. So just relaxing and allowing everything to be as it was. And the repetition was very, very important because the first time I noticed this intelligence, it, it was just incredible. It seemed so, so incredible that, and I couldn't believe that I'd never noticed it before because it was just so obvious. And so to repeat the recognition, the short moments repeated many times, allowed me to settle into the reliance on this open intelligence and the instinctive recognition that whatever I was experiencing was nothing but the dynamic energy of this intelligence. And it self-released naturally, like the way that a rainbow in the sky just self-releases naturally. You know, it appears vividly and we can see it and enjoy it, and then it just self-releases naturally. We don't have to do anything, we don't work at the rainbow, we don't worry about the rainbow or compare it with other rainbows or it's just as it is, it's beautiful and we leave it exactly as it is. And through this training I began to see that I could apply this same approach to all of my data. I could allow it to be exactly as it was one short moment at a time. And this approach was really beautiful because some of the data I'd been emphasizing so strongly for so long that it seemed impossible to not emphasize it. You know, ideas about the romantic relationship, the perfect partner. I'd been emphasizing this and it had been drummed into me since the first fairy tale I heard about the prince coming and saving the princess and, you know, from the age of, I don't know, zero almost. That, you know, this whole idea of, of you know, where am I going to find my happiness? And all of these ideas that I had, and, um, and it's quite, quite, I was just reflecting now, the times in my life when I've been most miserable have always involved a romantic <laughs> relationship. <laughs> I mean, there have been some good times as well, I wouldn't deny that, but it was quite funny to reflect on that too. And that wasn't, that was not in any of the Disney films that I watched, the prince really miserable because the prin princess has run off with another prince or something. And so it was just kind of getting real with myself about, you know, what the emphasis on all of these different ideas, this different data had meant to me in my life. And um, 
through this training the the clearer and clearer perception about what these data are and how we've emphasized them and the subtleties of that just increases and increases and so you see yourself more and more clearly you know you it, and it, it is very funny you know it becomes quite funny to see these things still playing out even after we've been introduced to open intelligence but um, just very naturally and very gently the emphasis on these data lessens and relaxes and settles out you know that they're outshone in the same way that the you know the sun rising in the morning outshines all of the, the planets and stars you know they don't all disappear immediately but the, the sun becomes brighter and brighter and, and until eventually the you just don't notice the stars anymore and it's the same with the emphasis on data and, and some stars are visible a little bit longer but eventually they, they just gently gently relax their um, importance and um, for me what that's meant is just more and more enjoyment of life rather than trying to force my life to look in any particular way and, and contrive how it should look based on what other people have told me. Instead now I can just be exactly as I am and not have to force or contrive anything and there's, there's such relief in that. You know, just to, just to be myself. It's, a, it's an amazing way of living and the thing that I think surprised me the most about learning how to be myself was that I was innately beneficial. And from this vantage I could look back at my life and see, well, actually that's always been the case. You know, I, I always wanted the best for myself. So all the things that I would do, it was doing, all the weird and wonderful things that I've done in my life, I, I wanted those because I wanted to be happy. I wanted to feel comfortable. I wanted to, you know, know what I was doing. So looking for meaning, looking for happiness, looking for security and things like money. You know, so I'd always wanted the best for myself. This, this de desire to be of benefit was natural and I'd always wanted the best for the people in my life. You know, I'd wanted them to be happy. I wanted them to feel comfortable with who they were and, and trying my best to do that in these weird and wonderful ways that I had learned to, to do that. And so what I discovered though, that when I just relax and I'm completely myself, then suddenly I have access to a completely different kind of intelligence than the intelligence that's based just on focusing on the descriptions, on the labels. There's a more expansive, a more comprehensive kind of intelligence. And this wide open intelligence sees everything exactly as it is. Because I'm not trying to fit everything that I'm experiencing into these learned categories or boxes. Instead everything is just experienced as this spontaneous dynamic flow of, of data. And when I allow it to be as it is, it's unavoidable that the data become my opportunity for me to express this beneficial potency. And it's not something that needs to be thought about or contrived. What I found was that by keeping the focus on training up the recognition of open intelligence, then everything else just takes care of itself. So I find that I'm more and more comfortable and relaxed in all situations. And to see the way that that ease and that openness and that intelligence now pervades all data streams. So there's nothing that is not included within this vast expanse of open intelligence. And by keeping the focus on myself in all situations, then that ability to respond in a way that's open-hearted also increases naturally. And life remains completely unpredictable. Some people are nice to me and some people are nasty and that's just the way it is. But my capacity to rely on open intelligence amidst the flow of whatever data is going on simply continues to increase, regardless of how anybody else is and however they behave towards me. And, and that's amazing to see the way that practically that plays out. I am not a victim of any data, either the data that we label as coming from other people or the data that I describe as being my own internal data. All of it is the shining forth of this beneficial potency. All of it experienced from the vantage of completely clear open intelligence. 
and that gives me access to this capacity to respond in a way that um, often takes me by surprise because I'm, I'm still settling into this. I still have this amazing opportunity to remember what it was like to live from the emphasis on data. And I remember that so keenly. I know the pain of that. And um, so it's, it, it's just an amazing surprise to find that this beneficial potency is just innate. So the more you train up open intelligence, the more the unstoppable flow of your beneficial potency just shines forth. It's unavoidable and unstoppable. And all you need to do is continue to train up open intelligence, to take advantage of the, the training that's off, on offer here. So you listen to talks, you take short moments whenever you naturally remember, you can participate in trainings if that's something you want to do, and that's a very powerful way to increase the obviousness of this recognition. You can cultivate a relationship with a trainer, and the trainer will allow you to um, explore in even more depth the subtleties of what the emphasis on these data streams means in a very practical way. You'll have the support of somebody that will allow you to shine this bright light of open intelligence on even the, the, the deepest, darkest belief systems and behavioural patterns and things that we somehow have convinced ourselves are not included within this vast expanse. And um, it becomes harder and harder to fool yourself. Which is quite annoying sometimes. Oh, I want to go back and indulge in some data. And <laughs> you just can't do it after a while. And, um, it, 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 but it's just more and more the openness and the ease and the inexhaustible increase in this beneficial potency is what becomes interesting, not going back and indulging data or playing out these, these funny games. And what's your favourite funny game that you used to play? And it, it, it's, it, life becomes easy and it also becomes powerfully potent. And that's actually what I was looking for, I think, when I um, shared with my friend when I was 12, to discover that yeah, actually my life can make a difference. I, s I always think of Knight Rider. <laughs> <laughs> One man can make a difference. He was right. And um, I'm going back to the 80s there. Some of you probably don't know what I'm talking about. But. Um, yeah, really, you know, to see that my life, in whatever my life provides me, is the perfect opportunity for me to express my power and potency as a human being. And when groups of us all around the world make this choice, then we change society from the grassroots. We change society from within. Each one of us and each of our lives becomes incredibly meaningful and incredibly important and incredibly potent. So that's the full scope of what we're actually doing here. It begins with each one of us, but very quickly you see the implications and the importance that this has.